I've done a couple of videos on Bo Burnham now, and every time it has been an experience. <laughs> so we're back again to listen to a whole other special. As always, I am excited. I just want to mention that, like I've said, I've done a couple of Bo videos, so there might be some overlap in songs. Like maybe I've already listened to one or two of these in my reacting to his songs video. It's just a risk I take when I do a video reacting to songs out of context. So I hope you're ready. I'm excited. Also, my merch is at MatthewMcKenna.com. And if you'd like to send me a letter, drawing, anything else, the address to my PO box is down in the description. Let's go. Just before we get into this, I want you to know that the video that you're going to see on screen has been mangled a little bit. That's because copyright really went after this one. So I'm sorry. It's going to be strange. But let's just, we'll just, we'll brace and we'll get through it together. Okay, didn't expect to start in his bedroom. Thought we'd be on stage. <laughs> I just want to quickly point out the visuals we've already got. We've got him in a face of clown makeup, so it feels like, oh, hey, I'm always performing. I've got this mask on. And as soon as he opened the blinds and the world could see him, there was a crowd. Hello, audience. Thank you for coming. You are here because you want to laugh. What a strange opening. You should not laugh. You should not forget about your problems. The world is not funny. Damn, dude, okay. 12% of the world's population does not have access to clean drinking water. The world is not funny. Guy Fieri owns two functioning restaurants. <laughs> Mad depressing. Now that we realize how terribly unfunny the world is, let's do this. Okay, I've always loved how Bo has included a little bit of realness in his comedy. <laughs> Got a hype man. Damn, that is a crowd and a half. <laughs> Ladies. Oh, damn, he's going straight into it. Hell yeah. <laughs> Come on, fellas, if you feel me, say hell yeah. If you can divide by zero, let me hear you say hell yeah. No, you can't. I love how many people are just going along with it, shouting hell yeah. If you like drinking booze, let me hear you say hell yeah. Hell yeah! If you like smoking weed, let me hear you say hell yeah! Hell yeah! Gotcha! Get these motherfuckers! <laughs> I'm legitimately already, like, unironically loving this. <laughs> I would be shouting so loud in this crowd. You're done with this call and response shit. <laughs> hell yeah! If you want me to get introspective? Let's get introspective! Bo getting introspective does not end well for me, because I always end up feeling something. Don't know why I'm here to make you laugh right, that's only half right. Look at the world, I don't know why I'm here. I just hope I don't get more from this than you do. I really like how Bo takes responsibility for what he says and understands that it can be his job to also be thought provoking. And it's not necessarily as simple as just making people laugh. You wanna be happy, well get in line. Yeah, this is almost musically incoherent at this point. <laughs> seen a comedy show like this in your fucking life. It's like fascinating to me when musical comedians are able to keep things so engaging because it can be so difficult. Let's get this show started, okay? One, two, three, four. So I was at the dentist the other day. <laughs> what a preamble, I'm amazing. Stop participating. <laughs> Not a participatory thing. Heckling immediately. I actually have always been curious of how Bo would feel about and deal with hecklers. I think of course it would depend on what the heckle is and like the spirit of it and the extent of which they did it, but it's just always fascinating for me to see how comedians respond. Because personally I did stand-up comedy from the age of like 16 to 20 and I loved when people would shout things out. It gave me something to bounce off and I've always been good at improvisation. However, of course there is a line and unless you know a comedian explicitly enjoys it, then just don't. Did you not think I was gonna use it, idiots? <laughs> I was gonna say, like, all he did was walk to a piano. I've got a lot of problems in my life. I wrote a song about some of the problems in my life. Hopefully some of you can 
relate to it. Here we go. I wonder how serious this is gonna be. I feel like it's gonna be a bit silly. Walking around, I got no one to talk to. Is it gonna be a joke song? God only knows why he cursed me to be a straight oh. <laughs> man. I was genuinely like, wow, those are some really nice deep lyrics. And I honestly thought he was just gonna leave it at cursed me to be. Like God only knows why he cursed me to be. And I was like, damn man, you, you were right for him. But I forgot he has a song called Straight White Man. And I'm honestly so excited to hear it. I've never been the victim of a random search for drugs. <laughs> You can't say my life is easy until you walked a mile in my up. Oh god. <laughs> it's just already I'm just living. Women want rights. <laughs> want kids. What? <laughs> can't you just leave us alone and also no to the things you asked for? <laughs> I just find it hilarious having that put into like jovial song because <laughs> it's just so accurate. Everyone <laughs> thinks that I've got it easy. And just because it's true doesn't mean that it's right. I think what's so strange is like how groups who aren't discriminated against seem to want to be so bad. There's often this really intense victim mentality. People who aren't persecuted or discriminated against. I'm subscribed to a bunch of subreddits that cover this topic exactly. Like persecution fetish or fragile white redditor. I just don't know how people can't see it. We used to have all the money and land and we still do, but it's not as fun now. <laughs> The social commentary is so tasty. If you truly listen to the things that people complain about, who are of privileged subsets of society, you pretty much invariably find that the things they're complaining about aren't due to their identity. They're just problems they have. And I always just think like, yeah, no one is telling you that you can't have problems if you're a man or if you're white or if you're straight. Obviously everyone can have problems, but the big difference is those problems aren't because of your identity, which is the reality for many, many people people on earth. I'm getting angry. I feel it. I need to t I'll take a second and just <laughs> readjust. I'm a big fan of hip hop because I like words. I like poetry and hip hop. Me is too. A way to condense a lot of those things into a short amount of time. I sincerely agree with that. I actually really enjoy hearing so many words put in such compact space. I think it's a really, really amazing use of music. Hip hop artists for me, and it is for me, hip hop, has traded in <laughs> words and poetry for beat fetishism. I'll give you an example. Is there a sick beat back there for me? Oh, shit. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle, here is my spout. When I get all steamed up, then I shout. Sing it, tip me over it. Let's do <laughs> The audience interaction there, spot on. Baba Black Sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir. <laughs> the reverb. <laughs> One for the master, one for the dame, one for the little boy that's living down the lane. Bitch. Unironically, kind of loving the beat though. I want to make something brand new for every show that only a few people get to experience. What's your name, man? Rob. Rob? All right. I'm going to try to make up a song about Rob. Bring the sick beat back to freestyle. <laughs> song about Rob. Hit the track. He seems genuinely scared. Rob. Oh. Rob. I got genuinely excited for some improv song. <laughs> you want an honest comedian? Go see the rest of them, all right? <laughs> this thing actually happened. Cool. <laughs> Any big fans of country music out there? Yeah. This is one of the songs that I actually know. A lot of modern country music, what, what is called stadium country music, is the exact opposite of honest. Where instead of people actually telling their stories, you got a bunch of millionaire metrosexuals who've never done a hard day's work in their life, but they figured out the words and the phrases they can use to pander to their audience, and they list the same words and phrases <laughs> off sort of Mad Lib style in every song. This is not unique to country music, though. Every music genre has these formulas. A dirt road, a cold beer, a blue jeans, a red pickup. He does the voice so well. I could sing in Mandarin. You could still know I'm pandering. Damn, the lights are so nice, though. Hear that subtle mandolin. 
That's textbook pandering. The song is still kind of fire, though. Good girl in a straw hat with her arms out in a cornfield. That is a scarecrow. <laughs> it's so dumb, but I, st I just still love the scarecrow lines. Write songs for the people who do jobs in the towns that I've never moved to. Dude, I've listened to this song like a couple times in my life, but like every so often I will literally be walking around my house and I literally have the line, I write songs for the people who do jobs in the towns that I've never been to. <laughs> it's such a, such a great line. Do what I do, cause I'm a total fucking country. <laughs> Such a ridiculously good one. Such good commentary on the music industry. But like I said, that's not unique to country. That is every genre, dude. Entertainers, they are lying and they are manipulating you. And it's not in the good way. It's like advertising. You deserve better. I'm not saying I'm it, but I'm the guy that says you deserve better. You go get better. You say, thank you, weird man. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> At least he's upfront about his fakeness. How dare they think that them fucking around is worthy of your attention? Them playing Pictionary, your attention's a valuable thing. I worked for three years to get it for an hour, and I barely get there. See? Such a serious line. I love that he hides so much of these, like, serious sentiments within these things. Ladies, I know what you want. 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 <laughs> Makeshift reverb. A guy that's tough, a feminist who likes to pay for stuff, the kind of guy that gets along with your friends without being attracted to any of them. <laughs> I'm just always impressed by how quickly he's able to get to the point in songs. I feel like somehow he doesn't waste a second, and I love that. If you want love, lower your expectations a few, because Prince Charming would never settle for you. <laughs> Jesus. At least men have very realistic expectations for women. Okay, I can see where this is going. I was confused by that first verse, like, my god, okay, hey. This feels mean-spirited. But now I've realized he's drawing attention to the fact that, like, people are always criticizing women for having, like, expectations or standards. But guys in general are just seemingly allowed to demand whatever they want in a partner. You want a mother, you want a therapist, and you want a girlfriend all at the same time? No worries. You might think your dick is a gift, I promise it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love the <laughs> people like Woo! We all deserve love. It's the very best part of being alive. And I would know I just turned 25. <laughs> So I know that a lot of the points there were pretty facetious, but there is kind of a notch of truth there for me. Like, I think people are obsessed with this idea of perfection in love and in a relationship or a partner. And you can have someone who is so wonderfully compatible with you, but people aren't perfect, which means that inherently relationships and love aren't going to be perfect. And please don't by any means think that I'm saying like, oh, well, you should just deal with a bunch of awful stuff in your relationship because love isn't perfect. But what I am saying is that it's unhealthy to like idolize this version of a partner that you've not even met. I've been with my partner for a long, 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 long time. There are things about her that I wish were different, and there are things about me that she wishes were different. But that doesn't take away from our relationship and what we have, because we accept and love each other regardless of our faults. And I feel like there are a lot of people that as soon as someone has like one fault, they're out. Even though they themselves are a flawed human being, because we all are. Anyway, that's my rant over for that part. Let's continue. And now... Okay. What making a peanut butter and jelly uh, sandwich <laughs> feels like when you're high on marijuana. <laughs> what an inaccurate representation. Okay, that's... That's a bit accurate. <laughs> Making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich feels like when you're shit faced. Yeah, then you just go straight to the jar. <laughs> when did he have cameras in my house? Hey, baby, I'm home. Honey, are you okay? What's wrong? 
Are, are you drunk? <laughs> you've, been, you've been drinking, haven't you? You've been fuck. You're fucking wasted. You know what? I I'm fucking done with this. You know are you're you? so immature. I can't leave you alone for fucking. This is what I deal with. This is uh. This is what I deal with Monday through intense. Monday. Who who are you talking to right now? You just gestured to the same. There's what a is, what is audience mean? full of people. Okay, you know what? This bit is getting a little too weird and meta, okay? We're <laughs> I agree. Where's that going? Sometimes you're writing into a bit, so you just skip it. And before they know it, you're on to the next thing. Guys, <laughs> at the store recently. Segway. You don't want that desperate sort of cloying thing from an entertainer. My fans, oh, I, they stick with me through everything, through <laughs> thick and thin. Do not stick with me through thick. If I stop entertaining you, throw me to the curb. I, you wouldn't stick with your mechanic if you stopped fixing your car. <laughs> the service industry. I'm just overpaid, okay? <laughs> and a lot of... I feel a lot of artists, pop artists especially, sort of infringe upon the responsibilities that just aren't theirs in terms of their audience, maintaining their audience at an emotional level. Uh, some of you might be sad and going through things. I feel for that. Life is tough. I'm not going to fix that with a song like Brave or Roar, you know, these inspiration. What I'm trying to say is don't listen to a song like this. Before we listen to that song, I just want to say that was a very, like, insightful little rant. Like, I tend to think the same, but, like, less in the way of, like, oh, I hope people throw me to the curb. I, of course, hope that doesn't happen. I'm a human being. I'm a bit selfish. But I'm constantly worried about that happening. I'm just always worried that something's gonna go wrong, something's gonna screw up. And I find it so hard to deal with, but also it kind of pushes me to, to do things. Sounds like unhealthy negativity, but it's fine. I'll deal with that another time. <laughs> Have you ever felt sad or lonely? Have you ever felt two feet tall? Have you ever thought, man, if only I was anybody else at all? Where's this going? Because it's serious lyrics, but it doesn't sound very serious. But if you don't know where to go, I'll show you where to start. Kill yourself. It'll only take a minute, and you'll be happy that you did it. Just go over to your oven and shove your head in it. Jeez, bro. I feel like you pulled back. Yeah, I, I physically did. <laughs> toughest problems don't have simple answers. You shouldn't just be brave. You shouldn't just roar. You yeah. shouldn't kill yourself. I think he's commenting on people who put too much stock in art and pieces of work. So if you're depressed, then you need to book a therapy session. Talk about your depression. Yeah, okay, I see where it's going. Talk about it and deal with your problems. Don't just palm them off onto songs or search for answers in music. Hold your breath till it's gone. Drink a gallon of What ice. the hell, man? Oh, God. <laughs> I can't eat. I don't know. Eat a Phillips head screw. Mary Courtney Luck. Wow, that was something. I went through a pretty rough uh, breakup recently. It was a long time coming. Uh, we had a lot of conversations about it, she and I. But recently we had the conversation. She said, it's over. We shouldn't fight to stay together just to fight again. That's a line and a half right there. Like, I know that this is probably going to go into a silly direction, but... We shouldn't fight to stay together just to fight again is an incredibly deep and insightful line. And it's just incredible that it, it comes from a comedy show. Even though it's not gonna go any further, I swear I don't regret a second of it. This is so sad. Then I said, eat a dick. <laughs> eat a dick. That was not the direction I expected that to go in. I tried to speak to you, but you won't listen. Eat a dick. <laughs> Just let me th eat a dick. Oh my god. Honestly, are you fucking fine? The back and forth between like serious and silly is fantastic. I got my father's temper and I'm emotionally inarticulate. So rather than being honest and <gasps> I did a quick switch because I'm hurting inside. I'm trying to hide it. So eat a dick. Again, the beat's like complete fire. I didn't think you'd cry for me. I didn't think you cared. I thought you were lashing out in anger, but now I see your skin. Oh God. <laughs> I'm scared too. Maybe we can work this out and not break up. <laughs> really? No, lick my clip. <laughs> <laughs> that was an incredible plot twist. I was so worried that the characters were gonna get back together. And that was how that was gonna end. What's the show about? It's about performing. I try to make my show about other things, but it always 
ends up becoming about performing. But I worried that making a show about performing would be too meta, it wouldn't be relatable to people that aren't performers. But what I found is that I don't think anyone isn't. That's a really nice take. Everyone is putting on a performance. I was born in 1990 and I was sort of raised in America when it was a cult of self-expression. And I was just taught, you know, express myself and have things to say and everyone will care about them. And I think everyone was taught that and most of us found out no one gives a shit what we think. God, it's the time of the show where I'm just so embraced by what he's saying. Social media, it's just the market's answer to a generation that demanded to perform. So the market said, here, perform everything to each other all the time for no reason. It's prison. It's horrific. It is performer and audience melded together. What do we want more than to lie in our bed at the end of the day and just watch our life as a satisfied audience member? I know very little about anything. But what I do know is that if you can live your life without an audience, you should do it. Damn, dude, that got like incredibly introspective. And again, really, really insightful. It was like every word he said was so true and accurate. And I think it's worth keeping in mind as well that every time you see a person, they are putting on at least somewhat a performance. The way that people are and behave varies from situation to situation and depends on who they're with. I'm loving this. I could listen to both speak for a whole hour. I went to Kanye West recent tour. I am going to watch this and we're going to have little bits of it in here. However, I want you to know that in my last Bo Burnham video, I did properly react to this song. If you'd like to check that out, there'll be a card in the corner of the screen, but I just wanted to let you know that there's going to be less of it in this video. Can I say my shit? Also just a mad shout out to the people who did the lighting. Don't go to the gym because I'm self-conscious about my body. But I'm self-conscious about my body because I don't go to the gym. Irony can be so painful. Dude, I feel like he could do a whole set like this. I would, again, listen to just this. The reverb is flawless. Think it's Tama, think it's Tama, then we break it down. I'm so ready for this change again. The truth is my biggest problem's you. I want to please you, but I want to stay true to myself. Seeing this live would have been incredible. I don't think that I can handle this right now. Handle this right now. There are the goosebumps again. Again, the lighting is mind-blowing. God, the... The... The beat is amazing. I actually didn't notice how everything melded together. Right now, right now. The running piano, the cello, the steady kick. Sounds amazing. Good night. I hope you're happy. I said this when I reacted to this before, but I just feel like this was so cathartic for him. And it's just like him really getting things out. I love this little cool down addition to the end of the special. On a scale from one to zero, are you happy? I also didn't notice that the last time I did this song on a scale of one to zero, because I actually ended up having a rant after this about how a lot of people tend to see happiness as this thing that is either on or off. There's no in between. You just either are happy or you're not. But I didn't pick up on the idea of one and zero being binary. Literally, it is either on or off. And I just think that's a really, really smart lyric that needs to be acknowledged. I really want to try to get happy. Then I think that I could get it if I didn't always panic every time I'm unhappy like. I do also panic when I'm unhappy. I've been trying to learn to just like let my emotions wash over me. Hey look ma, I made it. Are you happy? Feels like another meta commentary on the industry because maybe he doesn't like some of the parts he's chosen as a performer. This end just feels so nice and warm. Absolutely incredible. And yeah, 
a little bit intense at times. But honestly, I really love when a work of art can challenge my emotions and make me think. I know that sometimes people don't like when I speak so much in my reactions, but to me, that's what I find so special about this and this format. The fact that I can so often be so inspired or provoked in thought to just have long rants that are solely triggered by someone else's creative output and I think that's wonderful and I think it's special and I appreciate Bo for making this and having that impact on me, my life, and my content. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to click that like button and as always, have an awesome time until I see you next. See ya!